All right, okay. We just wait uh, a little bit uh, until 9 a.m. so that uh, all the participants will be uh, have been here lah until later, right? Um, so how are you, Kiman? Okay. 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 <laughs> Karim is not able to join us this morning. Uh, he, yeah, yeah. Easy week. Semester starts soon, right? Soon. Yep. Uh, 20 something, not 22nd. Oh, okay. So, yeah. And I actually, yeah, the 22nd of March. Another one week and a half to go. Uh, we actually, I have actually got another bengkel today for Semakang curriculum. Uh, so, double, double bengkel. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of sessions also today. Yep. Iman bila nak datang Penang? Bila nak datang Penang? Oh, interstate lagi. allow ni. Belum beli ha? benar lagi. Okay, okay bila dia benar lagi. Alright. So, you will be coming here lah? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Alright. Okay, one minute to go. It's nine o'clock. Huh. All right. So, Assalamualaikum and a very good morning, everybody. So, my Mac already alerted me. Uh, it is 9 a.m. All right. So, Assalamualaikum. Good morning uh, to all. Uh, who is attending, who are attending this um, webinar this morning. Okay. Today we have Mr. Chua Kiman with us. All right. Uh, for our, the next two hours. Okay. So we have uh, a workshop. We'll be having a wow workshop one. Okay. The title is creating virtual escape rooms for formative assessment. Okay, before I start the session, all right, so just I uh, would like to uh, um, inform all the participants, if you have any question uh, while the session is on, you can type in the chat box uh, Q and then you ask your question, all right, Mr. Kiman will answer your question later on. Okay, and if you, you, you have a very urgent questions that cannot wait, just uh, unmute your mic and ask the question. It is okay for you to unmute your mic and ask question. Okay, in case you for, uh, you, 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 are, you you think that you will forget the question later on, so just ask. Okay, it is okay. All right, so uh, I would like to welcome everybody to this, uh, uh, to our session this morning. All right, before we start with the session, I would like to, uh, Zana, can you please uh, share the MOOC challenge uh, slide first? Okay, uh, just uh, I would like to remind to every every USM staff, okay, every USM staff, uh, uh, we have the MOOC challenge, all right, now on, all right, so we have extended the the uh, registration on 20 Mar 21st March 2021, all right, so we would like to encourage everybody to join the MOOC challenge, you can register uh, until 21st of March 2021. All right. After you have registered, then you can um, you can start with your MOOC. So you don't worry. Uh, you haven't started any MOOC yet. It is okay. It is just the registration until twenty first of March two thousand two thousand and twenty one. All right. Then you can start uh, developing your MOOC. Then 
uh, you can develop your MOOC until 15 of September 2021. So the whole first semester, okay, uh, no, second semester and first semester, you can uh, develop your MOOC, then uh, uh, the, the, the uh, final dates to submit your MOOC is 15 September 2021. So you have a couple of months there uh, to develop your MOOC, okay, the first um, uh the first winner okay the johan will be have uh, will be getting rm 3000 uh, ringgit yeah uh, so mahal tu so uh you just uh, develop your mode and then we have kedua rm uh, 2000 okay and from the previous session in 2020 we know that the the, the prices was actually more than that it is more than 3000 and you will get so many things out of it, all right. So, tapi tidak diwarakan sekarang lah, all right. So, uh, please do do join us. We would like all the lecturers to join us in MOOC Challenge 2021. All right. So that's it for MOOC uh, for today. All right. So now uh, I would like to um, uh, introduce you to our speakers. Okay, our speaker today, which is Mr. Chua Kimai. All right. So, Mr. Chua Kiman is a senior lecturer at the Faculty of Language and Communication, UNIMAS. All right. So, jauh datangnya dari Sarawak. Okay. Da tapi datang di Angkasa sahaja. Okay. So, he is majoring in Educational Technology, Computational Linguistic, Learning Services, Analytics and Instructional Design. All right. So, he has won several awards at national and international levels for various innovation in teaching and learning as well as assistive technology okay and he was also the recipients of unimas academic award for the teaching award category in 2014 as well as the best e-learning facilitator at the international university e-learning carnival 2016 all right previously he served as the deputy director teaching excellent 2018 2020 and e-learning coordinator 2016 and 2018 at the Center for Applied uh, Learning and Multimedia UMS, UNIMAS, sorry. Okay, so uh, actually he is now uh, with us here yeah, in USM. Okay, ha. so he is actually our PhD student in the School of Educational Studies. So he is also USM now. He is not UNIMAS, okay, mengaku USM. All right. <laughs> All right. So, so uh, welcome here, Kimai, uh, to our session, yeah. and thank you very much for accepting our invitation to be with yeah, us yeah. this morning. All right. So, I hope that everybody will stay uh, with us uh, throughout this webinar. This is very um, will be a very interesting session. I won't uh, regret attending this webinar today. All right, so we are going to talk about creating virtual escape rooms. Okay, how are we going to escape, uh, create to re create a virtual escape rooms? Ah, uh, tu macam mana nak bagi motivation? How are you going to give uh, to keep your learners motivated, motivated in the online learning environment? Okay, so we have Mr. Kiman. So Mr. Kiman, the floor is yours. Thank you, uh, Associate Professor Dr. Azida for a warm welcome for this session. Also, thank you to all of you for making your time to attend uh, this seminar, uh, this webinar. I know there are a lot of webinar going on uh, this week because everyone is chasing the, the time before semester starts. Uh, as mentioned by Dr. Azida, I'm yeah, basically part of USM. So, alam lah kan? <laughs> so I'm USM and also Unimas. Yeah. But, um, today, I'll be sharing what I was told to share because uh, when uh, Prof Karim uh, approached me he was asking me to focus more on the tool so the I, I kind of call it wow because it's actually a short form for uh, wonders of web 2.0 so so there'll be there'll be a couple by so far we have two uh wow workshop one which is today and the other one will be next week on uh, uh discord uh, app if you have not used it before so today our focus is on uh, virtual escape room um i'll be sharing my screen now Hopefully it's okay. Okay. Oops. Sorry, I'm sharing the wrong screen. It should be this one. Oh, okay. Yeah. 
Okay, I hope you can see the screen. Um, let me move this. Okay, all right. Okay, so uh, today's workshop, as mentioned, is it will be about virtual escape rooms for uh, formative assessment. Uh, I'm not sure if you have done any or created any virtual escape rooms, uh, but uh, you know it's a learning process. So uh, you know we learn from each other. So I'm I'm going to share with you what was uh, found in other studies regarding virtual escape room and also my own experience in doing it, uh, you know, virtually uh, to assist my students in uh, not only to kind of like have fun, but more on uh, how do we formatively assess our students in, you know, learning all the content that we, we carry out online. Uh, I believe uh, most of our teaching will still be online. So uh, somehow knowing a little bit of virtual escape room concept will be useful maybe. Uh, so if you would like to try it out, probably this would be a good time to try. So, yeah, so, so the escape room concept, uh, if you have not heard of escape room, or if maybe you have heard it before, uh, basically in general, it's a room filled with, you know, puzzles that limit learners within a confined space and they need to solve the puzzle or the, whatever task you give them in order for them to escape the room. That's the normal uh, escape room concept, which you can actually do it, uh, no, which usually was carried out, you know, physically in a, in a physical space, right? And if you have seen in certain areas, like I think in Kuala Lumpur, there are quite a number of uh, dedicated uh, escape rooms for people to, to enter and try to solve it, solve some puzzles and all that, and then they pay for, for entrance and all that. It's like a theme park kind of thing. But in learning, um, it's also widely used uh, in the classroom. Uh, you can do it physically. Uh, for example, you can arrange uh, the room to have a certain sets of items and all that, and then you ask the student to solve. But knowing that we have physical constraint now, we are not able to meet them physically. So uh, the virtual escape room concept kind of like uh, blossom for the last two years. It's even before, before the pandemic. But uh, the concept of virtual escape room is quite similar to the physical one. The only difference is uh, you have to be more guided or you have to provide more scaffolding because you are not there with the learners. And even if you do it online, it's different from you monitoring the space physically. So there's a slight difference in terms of how you carry out escape room physically and also virtually. So in a greater sense, uh, it can actually be used or uh, you know can be integrated with a lot of other pedagogies. Like if you're using problem-based learning, if you're using case-based learning, if you're using challenge-based learning, escape room is like a buffer, another layer of encouraging your learners to complete all the tasks that you have uh, within any pedagogy that you have chosen. It can also be used for formative assessment, which, which is one of my focus today, because it's one of the easiest to, to be carried out. But if you would like to venture further on how to use it for you know, PBL and all that, you can take some points that I'm going to share today and see if you can use it. And uh, because it's a two hour, called micro learning session for today, uh, I, I will try my best to go slow in the steps. So uh, because my session will be more like a demonstration of how, how to do it rather than uh, lecturing you on all the facts or all the, uh, all the concept that you might have read or might have heard some else, uh, elsewhere. So the hook, you know, uh, what is so good about escape room. Now, one of it is of course problem solving because it's, uh, it's like, made for this escape room is made for this purpose because you need to have problems or a set of problems or tasks where you kind of like put it in a room and uh, learners need to solve them before they can escape right so basically it's built for this it's just that the difficulty you know whether you want it to be hot or you want to be lower uh, high order thinking or you, you want it to be lower or lots uh, it, it depends right you can have a mix if you want to or you can use it for uh, mainly low order uh, thinking skill first, and then you progress to higher order thinking. I usually do that. It means you have one escape room uh, to tackle the lower order thinking skill first, like you know all this memorization, understanding, and all that, before you move on to a greater uh, level. Or you want to integrate both in one room, that would be no problem as well. Another reported benefit would be uh, memory retention. Um, Strangely enough, if you search through Google Scholar, which I will share later, you see a lot of studies on escape room uh, are normally applied in medical uh, school. Uh, it's quite interesting to see how they use uh, escape room for problem-based learning. And what they found out was 
when they use it through escape room, the memory retention is higher because uh, in an in a actual use of escape room, if you design your task properly, they have to memorize certain uh, keywords or certain facts before they move on to, to solve other puzzles and things like that. So the way you design escape room actually helps that part of memory retention. So while some may argue memory retention is very low order thinking, but uh, as you know, even if you want to progress to higher order thinking in the Bloom taxonomy, you still need the uh, memory retention to function or else, you know, you can't really relate to a greater, uh, you know, task of greater com complexity or greater difficulty. And if you cannot even remember certain uh, factual or certain uh, keywords in, in your field, uh, it will be harder for you to progress up into, you know, up, up the uh, Bloom taxonomy. So that's one of the benefits of Escape Room. Another one is uh, collaboration. I think this is more, you know, evident in physical uh, settings because, you know, in in a physical setting like you see in a the picture, they have to work together, whether it's uh, it's pad or uh, or trio or even a larger group. Usually, it's up to five, or it could be larger if your task is bigger or your room is bigger. But normally, it's about three to five if you want to do it in a in a group. But pad would be quite nice as well, like uh, you know, uh, a pad work. Or, or individual, it depends. But what happened is because the concept of escape room is a bit more like a gamified kind of setting. So the motivation to collaborate is there, right? And of course, communication, because you have to communicate because if you don't communicate, you're gonna take a lot of time or longer time to solve a lot of puzzles uh, within the escape room. So if you don't communicate well, or if you don't plan how to work as a team, uh, you're, you will not be able to uh, complete the, the task or uh, solve all the problems in the escape room faster. It'll, it'll take longer time. And like any escape room, there's a time limit. So you, you, you probably need to pressure them under that kind of uh, a situation. So I, I believe uh, if you have attended the previous uh, webinar arranged for the past few weeks, you know, you have heard about how to use all these kind of methods in terms of pressure, you know, using pressure, using either uh, humanistic approach and all that. You can use all those, but you can add on a layer of escape room as an outer layer of uh, having that sense of gamified uh, setting for your learners to actually uh, do whatever you want them to do, right? So these are some of the studies that uh, I highlighted. You can see, even if you Google uh, to Google Scholar, if you search, uh, after the year 2017, uh, you get about 5,000 papers right, on, on the use of escape room in education. And most of them are in medical field or even in all this uh, technical field, surprisingly. Um, so you have you know, uh, people uh, venturing into how they use uh, escape room for uh, the study of radiology, you know, or even uh, surgical education. You have even all this uh, you know, active learning and all that. So, it's quite surprising to see that uh, escape room is flourishing for the past, especially for the past two years. Uh, if you Google out, you'll see a lot of uh, usage of escape room uh, within uh, 19, 2019 until, uh, until now. And it wasn't that popular before the year 2014. I, I, I saw the, the list. I mean, when I, when, when I was trying to search uh, for, for, for the review and all that, you'll notice that it was not that popular. But now I think because of the concept of uh, gamification, uh, escape room is one of the uh, key uh, tool to, to do uh, gamified uh, learning. So perhaps that's one reason why. And also it actually fits nicely to a lot of uh, pedagogy like problem-based learning, you know, like I told you, and even uh, challenge-based learning. In a normal PBL classroom, perhaps you can assign them to sit in a group and solve a trigger and all that. But if you add another layer of escape room, it becomes more interesting and they are more motivated to complete whatever they need to complete within the PBL task or to, to solve the trigger that you have given them and all that, all right? So uh, you can try and search, and this is an interesting area. But it's also interesting to see how uh, quite limited, uh, you know, studies were done in um, in Malaysian setting so far. So uh, per perhaps this one area that we we all could venture into and try to discover further whether Malaysian learners are are really you know appreciating the benefits of escape room. So before we go further, I would like you to try this uh, because before we go, you know, on how to build or how to create your own escape room, I would like you to try and go to bit.ly and wow room one. Those of you who are following this session uh, through mobile phone, you I, you can try and load it using your uh, another tab, your browser, uh, see whether you can see it should be loading. 
if it's not then perhaps you can try it later but those with a uh, laptop if you're using laptop now then you can open another tab and uh, or your browser in chrome uh, that would be good and go to bit.ly slash wow room one that's the shortened url for you to try it out okay so because i would love you to try before we go further on how to create it or else uh you know you you, you don't get the feeling of how we actually do uh, uh virtual escape room right are you able to go in let me type in uh, let's see if you can go in if you can go in then you will be able to see this one i made this for specifically for this workshop um I'm going to let you try this. Okay. I'm going to let you try this. So all you have to do is to click let's go, right? Read the instruction first. All right. This is quite easy. I don't think you need 15 minutes. Probably you need shorter, you know, you probably will complete in five minutes, but I, I just, I just let you try. So the situation is Mr. Attack has captured teachers uh, who he taught are not ready to teach online, including you, in order to escape, solve five problems related to the topic of online teaching and form a five letter password to unlock the door. So you have to unlock the door by clicking the escape button in the middle later. And you, before you do that, you have to find the clues to get the five letters. I think this is quite easy. So uh, if you're ready, you just click start. If you want some music, you can turn on the music. If you don't want the music, if you think it's a bit disturbing, then you can uh, mute the music and then you click start. And there you go. I'm going to time you maybe for about 10 minutes. Okay, so uh, I'm going to stop talking and let you explore this room and solve the or unlock yourself from this room. All right, let's see. So those of you who are following it from YouTube, you can try it as well. Those who are uh, uh, following it uh, through WebEx, you can also, you know, uh, try it out now. All right. So I don't know how to indicate that I'm stop talking. Maybe let me see. Yeah. Yeah, I see a lot of I see a lot of people type, try to type the code, but it's wrong because you have not find the clue. Find the clue first before you type the code. So if you get it wrong just uh, return and try to guess one okay maybe i'll turn on the music just to for my end nobody has got it right so far because you rushed to give the answer <laughs> find the clue first find the clue first you are not finding the clue In the room, there are many uh, spaces where you will have to answer and get the clues. Like, for example, let's say I'm demonstrating now. If I were to click on this one, I'm going to get some question. I have to answer it and then I'm going to get the clue, right? Find. I have one person got it right already. Less than, well, that's fast. <laughs> Less than five minutes. Only one person got it right so far. You have to click and find a clue. If you just randomly type your answer, you will not be able to get it right. Two people got it right. <laughs> Three now out of, uh, out of 10 who had submitted. Probably more can try, more can try. Yeah, quite a lot got it right now. Okay, good, good, good. You're getting there. 
if you have not tried uh, escape room, this is your chance to try. Good, you guys are fast. All right, you guys are fast. Of course, it's fast because it's easy. <laughs> but then I, I just want you to get the feel of what it meant by you know what it meant by having an escape room, right? Still, a lot got it wrong. <laughs> but never mind. Go ahead. You still have time. Great, great. More on getting right. There are quite, uh, I think there are one. Let me see. One, two, three. Three who got it right, but it was indicated as wrong. So I'm going to fix that because of the capitalization of L, right? I already give you the clue. <laughs> so kind number got it right. Okay, good, good, good. Any more want to try? Some got it wrong. Still a lot got it wrong. <laughs> You can try as many times as you want. That's the beauty of this escape room. You can try as many as, uh, times as you like. Uh, how do I know that you got it wrong or you got it right? I'm looking at the real-time answer uh, in the Google form. So if you are a, a lecturer or teacher doing this, you can actually monitor your student uh, real-time if you want to. So you can check the uh, uh, Google form responses directly as they are doing this. So right now, as you're doing it, are monitoring your answers. Some still got it wrong after countless, uh, <laughs> countless time. <laughs> okay. Two more minutes just to try it out before we go on and how to do this. Yeah, I actually have I actually have three answers there. I already inputted three answers, so uh, probably the capitalization, if you randomly capitalize. But I I saw the I saw your answers anyway. So that's the beauty of having it in Google Form. You can actually check it real time, and even if the students are marked wrong, you can still rectify that. Right. So I, I think it's fixed. Some some are not yet. So I'm gonna fix it. Any more want to try before I? Kind of proceed. I have fifty. Wait, huh? Fifty-four, fifty-four, right? And quite a number got it right. I think more than more than fifty percent got it right. You it's supposed to be easy, but uh, no harm. Okay. Now, those of you who have not, you know, uh, who have not tried, you can try it out, but. Well, but because now I'm going to give you the answer anyway, but <laughs> I'm sure you want to know the answer and a lot of you got it right already. Okay. A lot of uh, mere, mere guessing. Okay. Because if you have not tried uh, escape room before, then uh, you probably could not know what to do. Right. Um, so let's, let's go back to the instruction a bit. Let's go back to the instruction a bit. It says here you have to solve five problems related to the topic online teaching and form five letter password. So you cannot simply quickly type the escape and then randomly guess it because you have to find out what are the five problems. Now, in most cases, like what I have shown you today, it's a simplified version, of course. And uh, you, you can actually guess the answer if you have gotten the first three or maybe sometimes it's two words or two, two letters. You, you kind of know the answers already, all right? Um, but in, in, in most cases, if you want to do uh, escape room, your task should be more complex, right? which I will explain later because this is just to get you uh, into that feeling of uh, being in the escape room. So what happens like this? As mentioned, you have to look at the room and uh, of course, if you want to make it easier, you can actually review the indicator. In this case, I, I, I hide the uh, indicator. All right. So if I click on this, you get the clue number one, because what I notice is a lot of, uh, you know, even even learners when they first try it out, no harm because this is a try, right? So what I will do whenever I do escape room, I will do a session. I call it onboarding where I will demonstrate to them how to actually solve one first. Like now, if I click on one, they will know, oh, I have to click that one and I have to answer it. For example, clue number one is which of the following two is more appropriate for synchronous? Of course, the answer is 
Webex. So if you click Webex, you get your answer. And the answer is L. It already indicated here the first letter is L. So you have to write it down, L, somewhere on your paper or on your, on your monitor. Or, you know, if you have a notepad, just type it out, L. That's one. So you got your first letter. Then you know that you, this one has been clicked. You might want to go and find other clickable area like this one. If I click on this one, it say, oops, there's nothing here. So I have to return. Maybe I will click on this one because I saw a USM logo there. So if I click, I get clue number two. Solve this riddle to get the second letter, right? I am the beginning of e-learning. I think I, I repeated this many times just to, just to lower the reader a bit. Like I am the beginning of e-learning, the end of every space. I'm the beginning of any, an educator, the end of active and case. So if you notice, what am I? Beginning of e-learning e is E. The end of every space is E. The beginning of an educator, that's E. The end of active, E and case is E. So the answer for clue number two is E. So you have L and then you have E. You have two letters now. If you are, you know, if you quickly, okay, L, E, you kind of know what is answer. You can quickly go to escape and then type out your, your code. But chances are you might want to be, uh, you know, getting a reassurance whether your answer is correct or not. So you might want to click on other areas. So let's say I click on this one. Clue number three. Which app on this iPad screen that can be used to curate and share useful learning videos? So let's say, wow, well, the answer will be YouTube. So I'm going to click on YouTube icon. I get the third letter is A. So now I have L-E-A, all right, L-E-A. So those who are quick, they can quickly type the answer already. If you don't want, you can still explore. There are many areas that you can click. Let's say I click on this one. This is clue number four because it's bonus because I don't I don't have to do anything. I quickly get uh, the answer, which is the fourth letter, which is R. So now I have L E A R. Basically, you will know the answer is learn already, all right? Because it's five letter word. But if you want to confirm, you might want to click on other areas as well just to uh, confirm. Okay. So um, yeah, I mean you can click. You know if it's if it's wrong. Basically, you are just trying to discover which other area that you can click, right? So you can click on the uh, the spaces here, okay? Things like that. So one to, what I'm trying to tell you is the escape room concept. This is the most simplest uh, version where you hide certain things and then you give them code and then you just uh, type in the uh, the answer here. So if I were to type, let's say I type my own name, I think many of you have done it, right? I forgot to add this just now, but I have rectified this. But if you type learn, if you type uh, in small cap, all small cap, it will be accepted. If you type capital L, it will also be accepted now. So if you submit, if you view your score, if it's 100 on top, meaning the student has successfully escaped the room. If you're doing this in a short time like this, a monitor, but mind you, because you're monitoring online, you can still rectify any changes if you want. So you can actually show them the list of uh, answers uh, in the Google responses. If I were to show you now, this is how it looks like, like all of you who have inputted and all that. So basically, this is a, this is a real time monitoring of what your student is doing. And if, imagine if you ask them to complete it individually, maybe they will not be uh, willing to do it. But if they know that there's an escape room like this, uh, probably they will answer like just now because i put it in a setting like this suddenly a lot of uh, people are answering very fast you know um it's like you you, you really want to beat the time and try to be as, as fast as possible but again escape room is this kind of concept you can also extend it to another uh, dimension in a way you can have more than one rooms if you want to but uh like like you can have another door here where they can go to another room if you want to if the if the task is more complex or you have a bigger group but if you have never experienced escape room this is how it works right so it's not like randomly guessing you really need to discover take your time because after all i'm giving you a lot of time just now 15 minutes it's quite long so click, take your time to click on the items and uh, and discover uh you know uh, the answers and all that okay all right, so let me go back to my slide for a while, just to highlight. Okay, any questions so far, just in case I miss any uh, before I proceed. Let me see here. All right. Uh, yeah, Mr. I, Kiman, I hear some voice, yeah. 
Uh, hi, I'm Zainal. Zainal. Zainal, thank you. What is the best platform for this? Uh, yeah, which I will, which I will go into now. Oh, okay, that's good. That's good. Yeah. So normally free platform got, nah? Good. I mean, free. Free, free. free. The one that I'm showing you now is done free. Uh, yeah, that one is much of generally something like that, right? Yes, yes, oh. it is. Yeah, it is. Okay, yeah, so look good. Right. Thank you. So thank you for asking the 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 question on the platform. Maybe I will cover now actually. Just that. <laughs> Let me go to this first. How to create a virtual room? I mean, before we go for the tools, right? Uh, the first one is of course you have to how to put it. Um, how to how to actually design a room before you even go to the tool. Uh, that's, that's quite important because uh, you can actually create a virtual escape room using PowerPoint if you want to. Uh, it's just that PowerPoint, it's, it's a bit harder for you to control because you need to upload it to somewhere like, for example, Google Slides or, or, or whatever so that they can actually navigate through without you having uh, to be present. Or uh, I, have, I have used it in a form of PowerPoint but I use the breakout rooms in, uh, it could be in Zoom, it could be in WebEx or even in Microsoft Teams where once you break them into the groups that they have in their breakout rooms, you give them the PowerPoint to, to share within each room, right? And then they, they have to answer everything. In order for them to get out from the breakout room, they have to give you the right answer first, then you allow them to come back to the main room, for example, that's another way. But of course, today we'll try to simplify the process a bit by using uh, free tools available online because it's, it's more interactive and you can get more people to be involved, right? Because kind of PowerPoint, you have to gather everyone in one space and, and, and kind, of, kind of like uh, work asynchronously, which is also workable. Okay, first thing is you have to be a room designer. Basically, you have to imagine a bit how do you want to picture your room? Like what I did just now, I, will, I, I Google some picture of a room and I see this picture is quite relevant to what I'm going to use for my topic. So I do a bit of minor manipulation. Maybe I, I added like the USM logo just now. I added the, uh, the tagline, the headline of the story. If you, if you look at the headline of the uh, monitor just now, you can see that it's, um, it's actually manipulated. <laughs> if you know a bit of, uh, oops, sorry. If you know a bit of uh, photo editing, that would be plus point. But if you don't know, it's okay, all right? It's perfectly okay. Like if you see this one, it's actually manipulated a bit. It's poorly done, but you can see it's mani manipulated a bit. And then you can see the ESM logo here and all that. So there are quite a bit of manipulation being done just to add on to the space that you are going to use for virtual uh, escape room. Right? So basically it's a room designer concept, like, like interior designer punya mindset, all right? Then of course you have to be a storyteller. To be honest, the one that I gave you just now was very simple and the storyline was quite poor. Uh, I, that's why I don't, I'm not surprised that a lot of you actually don't really uh, find the clue. You immediately want to hunt for the answers because the storyline is not strong enough. So if you, if, if you would like to create a better virtual escape room, you, the first few pages or the first few entrants or onboarding uh, uh, session, you can actually have more explanation or you have, uh, you know, characters, you let them choose characters or let them uh, experience a bit of uh, navigational tool first, then you start, that will be okay. Or you, but all this, you have to link it with a nice storyline, you know, if you don't have a good storyline, like, like mine, like, for example, the Mr. Egg tag try to capture all the teachers is a bit ridiculous, but if you have a more interesting story, uh, it will be, it will be more uh, fruitful in terms of your uh, escape room, all right? So let's go on a bit. So you have to strike the balance. If you are using it for formative assessment, what happened is through my observation, because uh, I also uh, look at some teachers who are using this concept in their virtual teaching. What I notice is it's always the room being the priority, meaning to say they try to have a lot of uh, too many things in one room, too many puzzles or too many tasks in one room. Uh, but they forgot to balance up with what they want to achieve. So let's say if the focus is on CLO one, you have only one LO to focus on for your formative assessment, then you don't like suddenly have 10 or 20 puzzles within the room asking them to solve. It's a bit overwhelming, all right? So you have to strike the balance a bit. And the reason why I put it, put it as a formative assessment is because you don't have to allocate it you know, too many marks for this as well. If you if you if you scared that they there are some form of teaching uh, cheating or there are some form of co-teaching, you know, sometimes uh, learner from from the other group can be teaching. But if you don't mind this, which I perfectly don't mind as well, because if they teach each other, that would be good as well. But 
if you mine that part, then you can limit the, the, the scores, like, like a normal formative assessment. For example, usually you will be doing quizzes. Let's say your quizzes are normally 10%, right? 10%, maybe you have two quizzes, 10%, 10%. Instead of doing it in a form of quizzes that you normally do, you might want to turn it into an escape room format. Still 10%, 10%, and they still solve some of the uh, quizzes that you are you have you normally use in a normal quiz, things like that, right? So you try to balance up so that you don't, you know, go too much on the room uh, design and then go uh, go lighter on the task and all or the other way around. So you have to strike the balance between these two things, all right? So these are the key steps I will go through first before I go to the tools. Uh, select a skill focus. You can be more than one, but like I said, do take note of the allocated time. In fact, it depends on whether you want it to be synchronous or asynchronous. If you want it to be real time or synchronous, let's say you are using your normal class time, let's say your normal class in three hours, you can allocate like maybe uh, one and a half hour for this purpose. So you are there with them for, for one and a half hour as they are navigating through their escape room and all that. So either they come to you as uh, to ask for questions or you just monitor them like what I did as you are doing in the escape room just now, I was looking at the Google form and how your responses and all that. So I can, if I notice something wrong, I can rectify immediately or I can chip in into uh, the room. You know, I can just go into, if you are using breakout rooms, you can go into the breakout room, do a quick uh, briefing and then get out and, and something like that. So it's like you are in a physical space where you monitor each group. But if you don't want that to happen, if it's a proper graded uh, formative assessment, then you just let them be. And then you just compile the final uh, output or the, the answers for you to, to treat it as a graded assessment. That will be fine as well. Create the task, usually about four to five challenges, uh, depending on the time, actually, if you would like, and also the complexity of the task, if it's quite complicated, then maybe you can reduce it. But four to five are ideal because if it's group work or uh, if it's, uh, you know, not individual, if it's pair, uh, if it's less than four, it's become too easy. Like just now, even though uh, you do it individually, it, it feels easy because all the tasks are quite simple. You can actually quickly get, get it done, right? So you have to balance out with the type of tasks that you want to do. Um, I have seen a lot of people using quizzes. So let's say just now, for every task that you completed uh, or every problem that you solve, you get only get one letter. In some cases, you can actually do a quiz. So let's say it could be five questions on topic one, for example. So they have to solve the, the quizzes. Or if you do it in a PBL format, every small task just now is actually a trigger, a trigger, a trigger, something like that. And then they have to solve everything and fill in their answers in the form instead of one password. The one I ask you to do is one password. You can change it into answer uh, like a form for them to submit their answers. That would be another way of doing escape room as well, depending on how you want to design it. And it's important to create a story to link all the tasks. A thematic approach will be, will be nice, depending on your subject as well. Like medical field, you can always relate it to the current setting of, let's say, you know, you can relate it to uh, vaccination or whatever, or some, some, um, some myth or uh, legends and whatever to, to to lure your learners to to be more motivated to complete it. All right. I think if you if you do it normally, you know, just like a like a normal test, they would probably do it because of the pressure as a test. But if you turn it into a meaningful uh, storyline based virtual escape room, I think they will do it happier <laughs> in a way, and then they learn more. All right, because they have to engage in a lot of search, and they have to find out whether this one is correct or not, depending on how you structure your, your question, all right? Design the room and logs. After that, step number four, use the suitable tool, which I will explain to you later, and then decide how and when to run it. Again, you have to decide whether you want to do it in group, pair, or individual, or even synchronous or asynchronous, or the time allocation that you have, all right? Whether you want to be there with them or you want it to be uh, giving them more time, you can do a, like a 24-hour escape room kind of thing where they are there on their own. You just check the final answers or you close the room like access to the to your room after 24 hour uh, something like that so depending on how you want to how to structure it okay if you if you have tried a physical escape room it's the same concept actually because uh once you pay for example they will set like, okay you have to come out within let's say 30 minutes something like that if you fail to come out within 30 minutes then you have to pay more to continue if you if you if you want to continue and play it something like that so uh but that's a physical you know commercial types of escape room 
in classes or in classroom, usually you have to do it during your class time, right? So uh, it really depends on how you plan this, okay? So useful tools, the one that I showed you are using Genially and Google Form, these two only. Um, you can also use Think, uh, Think Link. I'm not, I'm not sure if you have uh, heard this before. It's quite, it, it's older than Genially, I think. So um, same concept where you use a picture and then you put all the interactive elements inside, both are free. Uh, you can also use quizzes. The, re the reason why I put quizzes because quizzes has this um, offline, not offline, um, homework mode, which is easier to, to control than the Kahoot. If you want to use Kahoot, can as well, but it has to be uh, slightly tweaked to fit it to your need. For example, online uh, real-time setting rather than asynchronous. You have to, be, you have to do it real-time. Uh, that would be more meaningful. Because I noticed Kahoot, if you, if you do it in a homework mode, it's, students usually do, won't really appreciate it much because they don't get the excitement. So you might want to do it real time. So there are many more tools actually, because the whole concept of escape room is that you put uh, uh, an image of a room. It can be video if you want to, but normally we don't want to bog down uh, learners with the loading of the resources. So we use a simple uh, picture like, like the picture you see here is actually snap real, real picture of a room, right? So you can actually take a picture of the classroom itself. And then you just put the items on, on, on the, you know, on any part of the room, or uh, you just get it online, you know, like, like this one is online, of course, you just get it online. The, and the one I, I show you just now is also uh, gotten online. So get a room or, or, or space and then start to plan some interactive elements. So, I'll, so what I will demonstrate to you uh, today is these two, because I think these two are the easiest. You can explore more tools, but these two generally, if you have used generally before, you will know how easy it is to, to, to structure it. And also Google Form to, as, a, as a platform to capture all the answers, as the platform to, to gather or record all the answers. Again, uh, tools are just tools. It, it really depends on how you understand the concept of escape room and try to be as creative as you can uh, to link all the elements and create a very meaningful escape room journey uh, for your learners. So normally we work backward, right? Like you see the step just now. What you can do is you work backward, you list out the task first and all that, then you try to design it rather than design and think of the task as you go. So you might as well just get the existing tasks that you have, like your quizzes, your, your assignments that normally you do in a different format. Maybe to this semester or next semester, you would like to try it differently for that part, only for that portion of your assessment. You can turn it into a virtual escape room concept, for example. So you work backward, you know what you want to do already, your skill focus, your task, then you go to the tools to create that room or the environment to fit into whatever you, you are planning to test or to assess, right? So live demonstration now, any questions so far before I move on to Genially? Anyone of you have, I'm sure you have tried because there's so many workshops and webinar on Genially already. And uh, that's one of the reasons why I picked Genially as the tool. Uh, so if you have, those of you who are in front of your computer, if you would like to try together, you can. Uh, if you don't want, you can just uh, take a look at what I will show you and then you can try it later, right? So uh, any questions so far? Just in case, kalau ada. No, eh? so I'm going to go to Genially. So let me go to Genially now. Still a lot of people trying the, <laughs> the, the schedule because I'm looking at the responses. Good, good. All right, good that you're still trying. Okay. Now, uh, this is Genially. If you do not have a Genially account, then uh, sign up. It's free, right? Uh, you can try to submit for education plan if you want to, but no big difference, I would say. Uh, it's more of the premium template, which in the case of escape room, you don't need those premium, uh, you know, those premium background. You can just upload from your uh, other drives. You know, you can you can find photos from open sources or you know, like. Um, very common sites like freepick.com and all that. You can grab all those, all those photos and then upload to your Google Drive and then you can sync your Genially with your Google Drive. So you can use those pictures rather than uh, depending on all the premium templates. You, so you don't really need to sign up for premium. Just use the free plan will, will do. So I'm going to show you the, the backbone behind the one that you tried just now first. And then I'm going to go 
uh, a bit of step by step, not really like really, really step by step, or else you'll feel very, uh, you know, you'll be bored with the, the thing. But this is how it looks like from the back end uh, when you when you were trying, as you see here, I have, it's like PowerPoint slides. I have multiple slides here, or uh, they call it, yeah, they call it page, right? In Genially, they call it page. So this is the room, for example. So I added a few, um, how to put it? uh interactive elements so in genially the beauty is if you click on interactive elements on your left menu here if you scroll down there's an invisible area this is where you can use and drag and drop and then you can actually hit hide somewhere and then it's clickable but of course you're you're hiding it and when you present it to your learners if you click on setting here you have to hide the in interactivity indicator all right, so if I turn on, if I preview now for you, the difference is that oh, the learners can click on this one and then they will be able to see where to click. Like you see here now, can you see the difference? So now you, was, you, now you will be able to see where to click and where to find the clue. Now, this is useful if you, this is the first time you try escape room for your learners and you don't want to waste time for them like, like what I, what I forced you to, to, to do just now. You actually have to click, 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 click a lot of things. If you don't want to waste time on that, you want to focus on the touch itself, then you, you just allow this indi uh, indicator to be turned on so that they will be able to know where to click, right? Where to click and where to solve the puzzles. So in the case of using this kind of uh, direct showcase of the indicators, then you don't have to have the, uh, like this one, the, the, the nothing there type because they know where to click already. So you don't want to waste time on this. You focus on the area where they need to click and then solve. But if you would like a bit of challenge, which is the next level, right? The first level, maybe you can show first and then you can tell learners the next level will be no indicators like what I did. So if I turn it off in the setting part, if I turn off the uh, interactive activity indicator, if I preview, then, then they would not be able to, to see where to click. They have to really, really guess. But uh, if those who are proactive, like some learners, they are quite clever in a way because they can see the change in the cursor, the mouse cursor. So you can see like if it's not clickable, the cursor will not change. If it's clickable, the cursor will change. Some learners are quite fast to pick this, but again, they still have to know where to where to find, or else they will not be able to 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 find that zone to to click anyway. Okay, so this is one. Okay, all right. So um, this is one sample. So I'm gonna start from zero just to let you uh see how easy it is to create one, but. Of course, you need to have your tasks, you know, your your challenges ready first. Like now, I'm I don't have one. I mean, I'm I'm gonna start like from zero. If you have those tasks ready, your quizzes, you have done it in your Google form and everything. You have your quiz ready, like five or ten questions with automated marking and all that. Uh, yeah, multiple choice questions and all that, or even trigger. Or if you want them to submit short short answer, you have done that earlier. Set settle that part done. Then you come to Genially, you set up the room for that kind of uh, escape room to be done. So let's say if I had to create Genially, there are many types. You just go for presentation, right? And uh, immediately you will be asked to to select one of the uh, you know one of the templates. And if you click free one, you are you know you are limited to some. But I think they, they're good enough for 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 escape room. You don't have to pick the premium one. Personally, I like to start with blank one because after all, you're going to get pictures from elsewhere. But if you think you need some ideas to start, you can get some of those uh, free one. Like maybe you're going to use this. Just take one and use this template. Let's say you're going to you're going to talk about astronomical stuff or whatever, then you just use this one. And um, how to put it? The uh, Ginelli will ask you, what do you want to add? There are, because this template has several several pages, you can tick or select all. Normally, I would just pick this one and the, something like a blank one. The one that would suit my escape room 
right? Uh, maybe this one, okay, three. So I will just add three first. Later on, you can still add as, as, as many as you like, right? Unlimited creation. That's the beauty of Genially. Even for free account, you have unlimited uh, creation. You can use as, you know, you can create as many pages as you like. So let's say this is your first, you have to imagine how you plan the flow, right? So you can type in your escape room. Maybe escape room. Oh. Uh, space 101, maybe. For example, so you can give a bit of introduction there. This, if you want to, this is meant for uh, ABC class, for example. Okay, just random. If you like to change pictures and all that, you can, because in Genially, you, you just click image. I think you have learned, you can pick the images that are all Creative Commons, like from Unsplash, Pixabay, uh, all this uh, GIF. If you don't want like this, is what I told you just now, you can upload your images from Google Drive or Dropbox, right? So let's say, um, you know, you want to add your own photos, you can show more here. All right, like some cutouts. I'm just random, going to randomly pick some, okay? Just, just in case, so you can just put it here. It's drag and drop, really like a PowerPoint, but it's it's easier than PowerPoint in a way. Everything is like pre pre formatted for you, so you can replace anything you want. You can add background music or background audio if you want to. You have to upload it from your uh, drive. Right? Try to avoid copyrighted uh, music. Right? But if you're using it in a closed setting, like your classes in Zoom or Webex or even Microsoft Teams, then it's fine because you're not you're not publishing it uh, to the to YouTube or whatever. But if your recorded session will be shown on YouTube, then it's best for you not to use any copyrighted uh, music, right? Just just find some uh, open, you know, free, free open source uh, audios, right? Okay, start. Every time you go to pages, if you click pages, you will see your pages. If you click on the start button here now, if I go to the first page, every time you click on the a button or anything, you will see three symbol. This is a uh, grouping of the word and also the button. This is the uh, interactivity or navigation. And of course, this one is the animation. If you click on animation, you can actually animate this one, whatever you want. If it's continuously moving, then you can click continuous and then you have heartbeat. So you will keep on moving, all right? Or if you want it to be entrance only, then it's fade in, depends. You know, Just like PowerPoint, but easier than PowerPoint. Then let's say this is, first page you want to link it to the second page then you have to link it to click on this middle uh, interactive button and then it will ask you where you want to link to right you can link it to this one all right pages or just a window right window means it will pop up uh, a window so you can click window and then you will type the window here but let's say i'm going to go for page so i have page one home to avoid confusion i will type let's say this is uh, later I can change that, but I click this one first. You can change the title by clicking the title itself here. So let's say in case you you scared that you are, uh, you know, you, you got mixed up. So you, that's home. So maybe this one is instruction. Page two is instruction. And then the third page is the room maybe. Okay, so just label it nicely. So for instruction, this is where you type your instruction in. So in this case, if you don't want this, you can you can modify, you know, you can just drag. You see, I'm dragging now. So I can just uh, drag and drop. And up here, there are all the tools here. You can put in order. You can move it back, right? Bring it to the front, bring it further back and all that. So you can do whatever changes you want. So pictures, if you don't like this picture, you can replace it, okay? Find other uh, pictures and replace it or upload from your computer. And then uh, and resize or whatever. If you don't want, you can just delete, all right? Just press delete or press this delete button. It will be deleted. So let's say a good virtual escape room will have a proper storyline. So right from the beginning, if you have a story, that would be better, right? If you don't have one yet, then you can start with a slightly more formal way of giving instruction like what I did just now. So you can just uh, use words like here's maybe 
here are the instructions okay or you can use whatever wording you like Oops, sorry this uh, line if you want it to be longer you can oh, keep on again if you want to lock it you can lock it right <laughs> but i'm going to move this okay Just do a bit of customization so this is where you type your instruction so you can do whatever instruction you like um if you if you can create a story that would be nice all right uh whatever story is suitable now okay iron man <laughs> is looking for an apprentice for what to help him with a b c okay then you need to solve five problems given here given in this room to escape and send the message to iron man i mean this is a very lame story but what i'm trying to tell you is start with a proper storyline here all right i know you are you can be as creative as you like but let's say you if you don't like the uh storyline approach like what we're, like we're doing now uh you can actually do a formal way which is you know uh there are five tasks you need to solve it within a certain time limit and then submit your answer in the google form in the towards the end if you want to that, that will be slightly more formal but again uh, a proper escape room will, will require you to be more creative in the storyline a bit all right so this is the instruction part notice that this page has no link button to link or anything so you need to go and link them go to interactive elements just go for any button you like you can upload your own icon if you want to uh, if you want to use your own icon then go to image and upload the icon or if you don't want just use the interactive element within uh, genial itself so let's say like this one i'm going to go for uh, this button lap type so i'm going to drag next okay you can change the color if you don't like the color change the color if you don't like the color if you don't like the uh sorry uh, you can ungroup them first okay this one i'm going to tell you ungroup them first and then when you click on the back part it will change only the the button color okay then you can select them and group them again if you don't want to if you don't want to group it's okay what happened is click on the button and link them again so click this interactive link to a page which is the next one okay why do you have to link like this because if you don't link like this then uh, uh they will not be able to navigate because you're going you're going to disable the normal navigation that, just like powerpoint if if you don't lock the navigation right they can just move uh, from slide to slide without even following the, the sequence that you want them to follow so in this case, I have three pages done already. So from page one, I'm going to go to page two, instruction, and then this is the room part. So the room is where we put our room, right? So you can go to Google and find any suitable room. I normally uh, go to Google Images. Let's say if you want, you can type messy room or messy lab or whatever. Don't, don't choose all this messy, too messy one because too many things. So you can go for maybe classroom. All right. Or if you if you don't want it to be messy, you want to be clean, then you can get uh, a cleaner room, or you just search for classroom. Okay. Or sometimes you can also search for escape room. Some people share their escape room background, or like I I shared here. All right. There are many escape room background. If you want it to be slightly more uh you know suitable to your to your setting, then you might want to find a suitable one like this one maybe. If you're teaching a different topic related to I, mean, I don't know crime investigation then you can use this one as the as the room background right or any room or just have a pic a photo of your own uh, classroom okay but this one is a bit spooky right all these photos basically just search uh use as a background is fine okay i'm going to upload one just to show you so i'm going to go to background I'm going to go to background notice that the background is this color i don't i don't want to use this i'm going to go and find my background i think i have quite maybe i use this one 
just a sample. So you will see the uploaded part here. Once it's uploaded, it's ready. You just click on it and then it will become your background. Now I have a background, right? The canvas is the one that behind here. If you don't want it to be, you know, having any background, you can just remove it. But uh, sometimes it's nice to have colors as well at the back. But this is the room that you're going to use. So the code, this is the template given just now. Just delete. You don't need this, right? You don't need all the extra stuff. You can create blank. So imagine this is your room now, right? And based on your list of tasks that you have set, your quizzes, your, your triggers, or whatever you want, uh, this is where you decide where you want to plant, or, you know, or hide your, your, your clues, right? So uh, two ways of doing this. You should actually put your items in first, you know, pages first, then you link, or you can link as you do, depending on how comfortable you are with the sequencing. Okay, some people, they like to do the sequencing as they as they add in the, the question or as they add in the trigger or, or the problem because they're scared that they forget where to, you know, uh, where to link, okay? So let's say we're going to do one first. We're going to try one. So you have the three pages done. So you need to imagine how you're going to test this. Let's say if, if you plan to do a quiz, right? If you plan to do a quiz, so you just add a new page, add a page. You can still pick the uh, template that you, you have chosen just now. If you don't want, you can start blank. Let's say I'm going to choose one just to maintain the color scheme. After all, you can delete anyway. So like this one. So I'm going to delete this maybe. So I'm going to delete this as well. So let's say this is the first, first challenge. So you can call it whatever you want. It can be challenge, it can be clue, it can be problem, it can be puzzle, it can be, you know, whatever you want to call it. But let's say I call it challenge one. Okay. So uh, the task is solve the quiz given in the right panel. So maybe you put an arrow like if you want. Okay. So you have your instruction on your left. And then on the right, this is where you're going to put the, the quiz. So how do you do this? Of course, you have to create the quiz first in Google Form, right? Let's say I'm going to use, uh, I don't have a quiz yet, but I'm sure you have learned how to do one, but I'm going to use one maybe, let me see. Okay, I'm going to use one quiz as a sample. Okay, let's say I created a quiz in Google Form. Right. Uh, maybe normally this is how I conduct my quiz. I just use Google Form, but because I want to embed in our escape room, I create it nicely first. So you can add as many questions as you like in your in your Google uh, Form. Make sure the setting is you, if you don't want to collect email address, then you can disable this. If you want it to be collected, then enable it. Okay, depending on how you want to, uh, you know, uh, limit your students. You, uh, in MCQ format, you can shuffle because after all, MCQ is like, you don't have, they don't have to follow the sequence. Then you have to make it as quiz because you want it to be marked immediately so that you don't have to, uh, you know, uh, manually check for the answers. So you can show them point value, but disable the correct answers or missed question. This one is good to disable because they will not be able to know what is the answer until they submit or until you show them, depending on how you want to set this okay so let's say the quiz is done you did your quiz done in the google form but instead of sending them the the, the form you go for this one embed function you know, go for embed this one get the embed code copy right and go back to genially go to uh insert right insert button here go to others and you can insert the the embed code just now. Copy and paste the embed code first and then insert. Then it will appear here. So your quiz in Google Form will appear immediately in the escape room itself. So they don't have to go out to, uh, you know, click the link and go to Google Form and then come back. So uh, Genially is kind enough to allow this function, which means you can embed a lot of things in, in Genially itself. So let's take quizzes. So you can set the instruction if they uh, if you want them to submit immediately, can or uh, 
you know, they, they do it at their own pace. If you do it, like if you give them longer time, then you check it manually, that will be fine as well, depending on how you want to set it. But for quizzes, I would really highly recommend you to make it automated. So they get the scores. So what you can do is you can set the instruction up here. Uh, you can only proceed after getting, let's say, more than 70%, depending uh, if you have seven questions, for example. This is one way. Or if you don't want to set the limit, so meaning they can complete all the challenges, uh, it will be you who decide the winner or who managed to escape the room towards the end. So no harm. So as they complete the challenge, they can still submit you know, as they go. So that will be one way of doing escape room as well. Ultimately, you are the one who will decide who is the one who managed to escape the room uh, towards the end of the, all the challenges. Okay. But again, notice that there's no button to, to navigate. So include the button. I normally will include one to return, means they will return to the room. So you can drag one button here and then link it to the main room just now, the room just now. So every time they, let's say they are done with this one, they submitted the answers. If they submitted the answers here, if I preview for you. Okay, let's say I just simply submit. So let's say I view score. It's two out of two. This is two points, all right? Because one. So I'm done. So I'm gonna go to return and I'll go back to this one. That is challenge number one. If I was told that I have five challenges, then I have to complete all five. If it's a team, then the team has to work together to complete all five, all right, within the time limit that you have set. So now that's one. This you're done with one uh one challenge. Okay. So you can proceed with another one. So there are many options. Now that you know how to embed um, embed things, you can even do tasks like, for example, if you wanted to find resources uh, as part of the challenge, let's say your PBL, instead of uh, they solve the trigger immediately, you want them to find five articles or maybe uh, five cases related to the scenario that you have given them or trigger that you have given them, then you can use other tools. For example, Padlet, right? You can set up a Padlet where you will, you will ask them to, to upload, you know, one, two, three, four, five, and then you embed it here. So you can embed anything in, in this uh, particular genially. So that will be one challenge as well. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it really depends on your creativity, but if you, if you need a bit of help in terms of generating ideas, you can actually, uh, you know, refer to some of the sample that I'm going to share with you later so that you get some ideas on what else to, to be done. So in terms, of, in terms of design, you don't have to worry because Genially has a lot of uh, template in the library for you to choose. Uh, so some are interactive, like this one is like moving, you know. If you don't want this kind of moving stuff, it's fine. Use the static one. But what is more important is what you want them to do, right? So in this case, let's say I want to add another one. I can say challenge number two. Okay, challenge number two. Then you can give whatever you want. Just now was a MCQ, right? A quiz for a ch challenge. Challenge number two could be a problem solving thing. I don't know, problem solving when you're a case study. So you can give them the trigger here. You know, uh, you know, you can type your trigger here. And then in order for them to submit, you can ask them to submit using Google Form or you want them to use another tool depending on how comfortable you are with, with your instruction. Let's say you want them to uh, type in uh, Google Docs, right? So you just give the instruction there and then submit to you. Or uh, I prefer Google Form again. So you can create another Google Form, uh, a submission form. I mean, just create one for them to submit because you have a record of everything. So it, that'll be easier. Or it could be in one form that you created just now. So let's say this one will be. PBL submission, for example. So you can put that challenge to just in case. So because it's open ended, so you can use a paragraph. So you can say uh, type or uh, put your answer here, for example. Okay, make it required. And don't forget to, if you want to use email, that will be okay. If you don't want, then uh how to put it use uh ask them to input their metric number or name all right depending 
I think metric number will be easier so that they, they don't fake their names. <laughs> okay, anyhow. So these are one sample. So once you're done, again, same thing. Go to send. Instead of using sending, just copy the embed code here. Embed HTML, copy. Go back here. Go to insert. Put in the uh, copy paste control V here and then insert. And then put it down here. For example. Right, so don't worry about the, the size. After all, they can scroll within the, the thing because they're using iframe, but yeah, something like this. So if you preview, your challenge two will be the, the, this is the trigger, for example, and then they will type the answers here, right? Blah, 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 and then they, they submit. So if you would like to go a slightly more conventional way, so every challenge you have, a form that would be the easiest way to to start in virtual escape room if you slightly if you're slightly more adventurous you can embed other tools right you can embed uh, even quizzes here if you want you can even embed uh, other tools that allow you to have embed code like color and whatnot. It, some some of the supported one i also here I indicated here as well all right okay anyway uh if you would like slightly more interactivity in, inside your task, then you can do more pages in a way like what I did. They find, they found, you know, a wrong, a right, and, and whatnot. So you, slightly more work in that sense because you have to create more pages, right? So I'm going to show you one page that you create, but when you, they got it right or wrong, you just use the window rather than creating more, more pages. So let, let's say I'm going to use this one. Okay, I'm gonna move this a bit. Okay, so I'm gonna put challenge three. I have challenge three now. Okay, so challenge three is quite easier. You just give the question by this outline here. All right, give the question. What is known as blah, you know, ABC lah. Okay, I just put here. Then you go to interactive element. This is where you pick the buttons, right? Just put this one maybe. You can delete the start one first. Drag to, okay. Now, you can change the text inside. So what's known ABC? Let's say you give ABC, DEF, right? Maybe maybe another one. Or you can even duplicate this. Click on it, right click, duplicate, all right. GHI, let's say I have three, I mean, by right, you should have all your questions ready and everything, but I'm, I'm going to just demonstrate to you the potential of how virtual classroom can, uh, virtual escape room can be done, right? So let's say the first one is the answer, right? So you have to imagine if they click on this, what will happen? First option will be linked to a page. You can create a page somewhere to give them the, the, the feedback, or you can use the window. So window is like this, click on it. So if you click interactive uh, button here, if you go to window, this is where you type in the window, it will pop up immediately. For, so you can you can use as big as you like. Bigger font would be better. So let's say I put here, all right, uh, you know, A, B, C is a form or blah, blah, blah. You give a bit of expansion too. Probably this is a lower order thinking uh skill kind of questions right the lower order one of course they can randomly guess but one way is with all the feedback that you give now uh it gives a bit of scaffolding to to for them to understand certain key concept right there will be one way so maybe for your formative assessment you can have one or two which the answers are already here but it's not graded but you only grade those that they submit through google form there will be one way just to motivate them or else if everything is google form uh, it feels a bit like a normal test as well. So you might want to have one or two like this where it's they get the feedback immediately. Maybe some some terms that you hope that they would be able to, to know before they even venture further into other tasks in a Google form. So the, the, the thing is, you can mo modify this. You can upload pictures, whatever you want here. I'm going to make it simple. And uh, you can change the color, and whatever. Save, right? Then the wrong one, you, you can do the same. Use window, don't go to page, use window. So the wrong one would be, of course, um, oops, that's incorrect. Uh, DEF is actually meant for something like that. So you give a bit of feedback because these are like scaffolding kind of, 
uh, task for them to to get familiarized with the whole thing right okay so if you if you don't want then you can just copy this this thing and then when you open or uh, set a new one for another button you can just paste it right so uh, ghi blah 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 because you have okay so if i click on this one i will get this one blah blah so let's say i preview if i were to preview this so if i click let's say i click the wrong one first Oops, that's incorrect. So I have to close. Notice that the learners or the students are not moving anywhere. Are right? not moving anywhere. The the pop up are immediately appearing, like one of uh, one of the item that I give you in the in the escape room just now. So if I click on this one, correct. Blah blah blah. So this this kind of feedback or this kind of uh, task is more suitable for very low end, you know, lower order kind of uh, uh, lower order thinking skill kind of task just to motivate them a bit to start, because if you have an escape room where everything is very challenging, it will also demotivate them and they will not be, able, they will not enjoy the whole process as well. So maybe you buffer like one or two with kind of this kind of thing, just to start off with the, uh, the session of the escape room, then you go for the, the you know, higher order thinking task. Okay. So uh, this is will be the easiest way. So you don't have to create pages, but because by normal uh, way of doing this, if you're using normal way, this one, you have to create another page for the feedback and then another page for this, another page. So you have three pages for, for the feedback. It's like how you link in PowerPoint as well. Just that in generally, it's slightly easier in, in doing it. If you like to, uh, you know, change color again, just pick the color, okay? Whatever you like, okay? These are all cosmetic, which is uh, not really important, but it will be good if you can explore them on your own, this one, okay? Now the 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 downside of doing this kind of task is like uh, you don't get to record, um, you know, you don't get to record like what you did in Google Form. So like, that's why I told you this type of uh, interactivity in your escape room is more suitable for a uh, slightly easier task just to motivate them to kickstart the room, you know, in the room before they attempt something more formal like using Google Form. So if you would like to assess them, I think the easiest way is to use Google Form. If you want to embed using a different kind of uh, mission, uh, go ahead. But uh, I don't really recommend, uh, how to put it? You embed too many too many tools as well. That's why I, in, in my slide just now, I only show you like Genially and Google Form. Because to me, these they are the good uh, two combination which are really, really good already. So if you embed too many things as well, it will be the, the whole the whole Genially, you know, package will be quite, Quite lagging, all right, and the student may be like a bit lost because there's so many, so many tools to 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 go into. So limit to two maybe for for a start. Once your students are comfortable, let's say you get bored with the uh, Google Form, you want to change it to another uh, platform like Wakelet or whatever. Go ahead, all right. So you can embed a different tool here. So you treat the Genially Escape Room as the the platform for you to gather everything, you know, to to structure the whole Escape Room so that they can. Uh, enjoy the process of uh, completing every challenges. So again, it goes back to your creativity in structuring and also the mode that you want them to be in. If it's synchronous, mean real time, I do recommend that to be done if you have the time. So you can try it out a short one, like let's say a 30 minutes uh, escape room during your lect normal lecture using WebEx or using Zoom or, or Microsoft Teams. So, you know, after you give them the explanation, you teach them, blah, 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 and then you go for 30 minutes escape room, but you're still there, you know, uh, in virtually, just that they are in their breakout room. So in each breakout rooms, they will be discussing on their own, you know, navigating through the, the Genially escape room that you have given them. Then you set the time, like they have to submit everything by a certain time after 30 minutes, then you can have, have the form. If you, if, because you're there, you can monitor, if you see that the team has done uh, completed everything and the, the answers are all correct, you can bring them back to the main room and, you know, meaning they are the, the first winner maybe. And then, you know, you can monitor the, the rest. And the good thing is you can also monitor the problems that they face. Like just now, I noticed that a lot are not really, um, you know, they don't really go for the, 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 the clue. They just randomly ask, uh, guess the, the words. So, so if I'm a, a lecturer for this class, then I will tell them, explain to them, okay, they, look, this is what you need to do, blah, 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 things like that. So it's a, it's a good way to formatively check your 
your learners actually in a, in a different mode rather than using the conventional uh, you know test kind of style which they may not be interested <laughs> but again like any other tools um you know you you can't you can't be doing this every lesson it's going to be bored as well so you might want to time your your usage of escape room from time to time okay all right let me any questions so far for this one don't don't forget to add uh, the return button every time you set a challenge because like now if i'm in challenge 2 i cannot go back to the room so i have to i have to add one button return here and then link to the room so the room will be the center point of everything right so if i were to preview this once i submit and then i return so i will go back to this room this room will be my my main uh concern but notice that i have not linked anything yet to my uh, on my room so if i go to page pages now if i go back to my room this is where i where i decide where to link to which uh which uh, challenge so i'm going to use the invisible interactive elements here. If you scroll down, invisible area here, you just drag it. So let's say I'm going to plant one near the computer here. So I'm going to resize it a bit. Then I'm going to click this button and then I'm going to link it to the first challenge. Okay, challenge number one, save. So you see you have one down here and then maybe somewhere near the fridge. Okay, I'm going to put one here. Okay, I'm going to put one here and then link it to challenge number two. Save, right? I have two now. I need one more, maybe somewhere, well, maybe near the, the brush. <laughs> Depends, okay? The brush here. Okay. If you like to have a thematic kind of a project, it would be easier, meaning they know what to see, not everything. They, you can tell them, like, you only need to look for daily objects, for example. But then, yeah, it will be quite open. Or maybe objects in green color only. So they will be looking at green color objects only, depending on how you want to set the instruction, right? So go to page and then challenge three. So now I have three, all right? If you would like some, you know, random part, which is not nothing there, just drag some. Just drag some and then you click this one. You can use the window. You can say, oops, nothing's here. Okay. Can okay, enlarge it a bit, bold it, and that's it. So something like that. Okay. Now the good thing is if you do this once, you can just duplicate this for those because you don't have to repeat the action of adding it just now so i i can i can just duplicate this okay i have i can have as many as i want you see it's already there so i just right click duplicate so i have one here near the phone maybe so if i preview this notice that i did not disable the interactive elements yet so you can see the hand being you know appeared so i can click on this i can go to the page I forgot to add return here. <laughs> okay. So you see, if you don't have return, then they will not be able to return. I, and I, I didn't disable the navigation yet. Okay, if I click on this one, I will go for this task and then I can return to the room. So that's how the concept works. It always go back to the room as a center point. Now notice that I have this navigation at the side, which I need to disable and also the interactive. So how, how do you disable this? For the navigation, um, if you go to pages, under pages, click pages first you will see this drawer this kind of site drawer so just go to navigation and click microsite so microsite means the navigation will not appear all right so i repeat if you want to disable the navigation uh, through the the normal like a powerpoint slide you know uh, forward and backward just go to pages click on the drawer here and then choose microsite if you click standard then it will be you will have the navigation on the site. If you go microsite, then it's fully controlled. Another one that uh, I need to remove is the indicator if I don't want to show. So that one, once you're all set, you just click all set. Let's say I'm done now. Uh, it's going to be public. Just say first. You can rename your, your escape room. Okay, I don't use this yet. So go to setting button here. Disable the interactivity indicator so that the, the student will not be able to see this. All right. They, uh, how to put it? The 
uh, the, the indicator will be disabled, right? So you can also disable sharing if you don't want to. Um, the free one, until, even until Pro, you will you have that small, um, you have you you will have that small genially watermark down there. I think it's fine, you know, because it's not really disturbing. So you don't have to pay to remove it. Some people ask me how to remove it by paying no need. No, you don't have to because if I if I preview now, sorry, if I were to present now. I mean, this is just a sample just now. So you have the instruction. I forgot to link this one. Let me just go back here. Forgot to link this one. See, if you don't link that, it will not move. So, oh yeah, I already linked, but it's not working. Okay, let me refresh. Oh yeah, um, for Genially, the changes sometimes is not real time. In a way, once you had did some there, you need to make sure it's safe. So up, up here, you need to make sure the word is safe. Then the changes that you make uh, are, are applied or else you will get things like just now, uh, it's not applied, okay? So I'm now in the room. You see, I cannot navigate to the site anymore and you will see this watermark down here. Mine is education uh, plan, right? If you are using free one, is a bit green, it's the same. The education plan is you can try to sign up using the education plan if you want to, but it's not necessary. So if you click this one, then you will go to the uh, question and you return and all that. But to me, the the generally uh, icon watermark is okay. It's not really disturbing. It's not like it's so big in the middle and all that. So you can still use it as a escape room. So if you put it full screen, then it look nice because it will take up the whole the whole screen, right? So if you don't want, then you can just use the normal one, but I have to click and find. Like now, now I have to click, okay? Like just now, uh, I, how to put it? A lot of you immediately uh, go for the answer instead of looking for the, the clue first. Okay. So this is the concept of escape room. There are many ways to, to, to plan or to use different types of, uh, uh, how to put it, questions. It really depends on your questions, right? Then you use the escape room as a layer to, to link everything. Okay. So don't feel like escape room is something, something really out of the blue kind of thing, right? It's basically reformatting your existing quizzes, your existing tasks in a different different format, which is the escape room format, right? So any questions so far? I, I'm not monitoring the webex. Let me see. Yeah. Where's my webex already? Give me this. Any questions? Yeah. Okay. Oops. Any question? Mm, how come I cannot see the question? Oh, chat here. Okay, here. Okay, I saw a few questions. Let me let me read out some first. From Webex. Okay, all right. Okay, question number one. Question from YouTube Can we use Genially for students to work both collaboratively and synchronously? Yes, can. Now, um, basically, the escape room concept is that you don't need them to be to be like everyone be in uh be be in the room you know like moving things all right because if once you share the the link everyone will be seeing the same room anyway like just now all of you are entering the same room and you're looking at you know your own navigation and nobody can can actually uh stop you just that if you want it to be really collaborative like i told you do the breakout room format like in webex or zoom you break them up in the, according to their grouping already Right, so each uh, breakup room uh, and then the team they will load the your your escape room and then they will discuss among themselves as they look at this, the the escape room. You get what I mean? After all, they they're gonna share the screen anyway, so they will be discussing. So one person maybe will try to click, and then the rest will be discussing the answers together and all that. So it that is more interactive if you're doing it real time. Uh, using the breakup room will help, right? 
and you don't need them to be into your genial you don't have to add them into your genially and, and and as a collaborator because if you do so they will be editing your things right so you don't need to do that basically you're using it as a room and you create the the, the atmosphere or the room for them to to just uh, navigate and discuss and you use uh, microsoft teams webex or zoom to use the breakout room function for them to load and see the you know the the questions and then they do it on their on their own right if it's real time of course you're like i told you just now you're there to monitor so you can always go into the breakout room and then see what they're doing and then go out come out and then go to another room you know things like that so you can you can you can uh, monitor them right can generally be embedded with university e-learning? I'm not sure what uh, platform are you referring to. If you're using uh, any platform like Moodle or whatever that allows embedding, then you can because generally it comes with the embed. Uh, generally just now comes with the embed function. If I were to go back to generally, is it here? Yeah, if you go to generally uh, function, if you click share, uh, you can also use the embed code here, All right? It really depends on the platform that you're referring to. It. Moodle uh, also depends whether the admin allows it because in, in some universities, uh, they set the setting to uh, disable uh, embedding because uh, some some of the um, spam, you know, the, all these bo bots, all these um, uh, malicious things, they can, you know, can, can be used to to be embedded in the pages as well. So that's why some university, they disable that. But if your university allows you to, to embed things like Padlet or whatever, it means you can also embed generally because it comes with this embed code. So you can put in your e-learning platform and then it will be, they don't have to go out of the, the platform like, like you mentioned, right? So you have to check first whether if your, if your platform or your LMS has allowed you to embed other things, then it means you can embed uh, generally. So means that we cannot stop the student to proceed to the next page if they uh, get that. Yeah, that's the, that's the, in a way, that's the downside of um, virtual escape room. But even in the physical part, it's more or less the same thing as well. Just that in the physical setting, if you're doing escape, doing escape room, you are there to, to kind of being the referee to check the answers. And then, then you will tell them, okay, you can proceed and you cannot proceed. But in this case, if you want to really block them from proceeding, what will you what you need to do is you have to create another genially where uh, after they've completed that task, let's say let's say their view score or whatever, they manage to achieve seventy percent. Then you give them another link to 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 continue to the next level if you want to. There will be like two two links lah. So one link is for them to to block them from entering the other room. That's why I told you just now, escape room can be multiple rooms if you want to. So you can set it nicely, like level one is like, they have to really achieve certain score first. Like, uh, like I said, 70%, those who achieve 70%, they can proceed to the next level. So you can give them another link so they can go, go to the next level. That's one way to block them. But if you want it to be automated, uh, well, you can by putting the link here, but again, uh, it's a bit hard to control because, uh, you know, the platform is not our creation. We are using other people's, uh, platform so we are we are tied by the limitation that they set but uh because it's formative assessment i do encourage you not to block them just let them proceed after all if they got it wrong it's also a formative uh, information to you as well to know that okay this group needs help something like that so uh, you know don't block them uh, just let them complete every task then you monitor from from your end after all it's a formative uh, method right okay there will be one um Mr. Afizi mentioned about, I find it difficult to make a storyline that is meaningful and related to the task given to us and uh, that's really line method at, at all. Do you mind showing us? Yeah, to be honest, it's, it's not really crucial, right? Storyline, because I know uh, one of the challenge, even, even my, for my case, one of the challenges is to come up with a very interesting storyline. Uh, to, to begin with, if you do not want, like I told you just now, if you do not want to have a proper storyline of to link every single thing, you can do the normal way, like uh, I show you just now, like a typical instruction. But you put it in the in the escape room format, you know, so you don't have to think of different fancy storylines. Sometimes this storyline is not really interesting to the students as well. So you're wasting your time to think of all this storyline, but the student do, the student do not enjoy it. All right, but 
if you kind of know your learners very well already, in a way, you kind of know they like, you know, certain certain movies or certain characters, you can use that as a, as a central theme. That would be the easiest. But not in terms of the storyline per se. You just use some of the character's name and all that. That would be sufficient to, to start. But if you are able to think of a better storyline, um, I wouldn't say like better storyline will make your escape room really, really good because it, ultimately it depends on your learners as well. You may think that your storyline is really good, but your learners may not. So things like that. So don't waste time on that. That's why I told you don't, don't really be uh, too concerned, you know, about the, the storyline yet. Just test first, you know, use the normal way, right? You don't, don't have to uh, craft a, 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 an interesting story. Right, just use some characters that will be sufficient. Right, but what I what I'm going to tell you because when I started using escape room, I I really make it like a very formal kind of instruction. You know, in this in this escape room, you need to one, two, three, something like that, and it works as well. I mean, students are enjoying it. But as I get to know them better, and I I also get into the environment where I know okay, the something is hot now, a trending now. For example. Like uh, there was a time where they were so crazy about Among Us, you know, all this game, Among Us, finding the uh, imposter and all that. So I use that as a theme. So I, I kind of changed the escape room format in a bit where they had to find out the imposter by by finding out clues in the room, things like that. You know, that kind of storyline, not really like you craft a new engaging story. That would be quite a challenge. I, I agree with um, obviously, all right? Uh, I, the example I will give you, right? The example I will give you. What happened when students have completed all the tasks correctly? Any rewards going to indicate? Yeah, you can set up. Um, you can set up a page for that reward. Meaning, it depends on your creativity. Uh, once they once they get hundred percent, like just now the form, you can actually have a link in the form in the feedback. So, or you send it manually to them. If you are using a normal real time classroom like Zoom, uh, MS Teams, and all that, then you can reward them immediately, lah. You know, give them a, give them a link to a different page or whatever, or maybe reward them saying that okay, congratulations to Team A, you have uh, completed the challenge within certain time, a certain time. Or you have a leaderboard. You know, some some people they create a leaderboard in uh, Google uh, Sheets or Excel. Just put in the um, the, name, the team names and then they rank them. That will be one. Or you create one page within the Genially itself to, to indicate Genially, uh, you know, congratulations, you have completed all the tasks and all that. But uh, if you're using a lot of Google Form, like the open ended question, then you might not need that because you still need to read through the answers first and then you announce the winner. So sometimes uh, we call that the delayed <laughs> escape kind of thing where you announce who managed to escape later. Uh, because that's the challenge of uh, virtual escape room in, in, in a sense, right? I hope I answered that. Uh, will this escape room works with audio? If you insert audio files, so far in Genially, you can insert uh, video and all that. I think it will work even, even for videos. So let's say if you don't want to have a clue like this or instruction like this, you can turn it into a video. So you can insert uh, a video. You have our audio here, insert audio or video, depending. So instead of reading the text, you can you can record yourself talking or instruction and then embed it here, right? That that would that would work as well. Okay. Or Genially allows you to record directly here, but uh, the audio quality is not that good. So I do recommend you to record it elsewhere using other software first, or even video using, you know, you can use your own video or videos from YouTube. Especially for those who are doing case studies, you know, uh, case based study, uh, case based learning, and also uh, problem based learning, you might want to use video as your trigger, right? So it, that will work as well. So it, uh, generally, actually allows that. So you just have to type the the link here and then insert. So instead of typing a text, your challenge will be uh, shown in the form of video. That will work as well. Okay. How can we ensure that the student completed the first task before continuing to the next task? If we do this asynchronously, yeah, asynchronously, I think you you, um, how to put it? It depends on your sequencing. The linking just now, right? So if you link it in a way that they have to go in linear way, where the link only appear like this one, like challenge one, and then if they go, they cannot return. Means they 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 will not be able to return. They have to finish something first and then proceed. That would be uh. Uh, how to play a linear way. Lah. But I don't really recommend that because the concept of escape room is 
they can start anywhere they like. You know, I, I may not find challenge one first. I could solve challenge five first. You know, I can blah blah blah. So you might want to you might want to ensure that the way you put the the questions are like they are not really how to put it huh? in sequence, right? In a way, they can start with five first. They can do uh three first, four first. Like what happened just now, where you you randomly find the clue. That's the concept of escape room because it has to be open. It cannot be too linear. If it's linear, then it, it feels like the normal PowerPoint page by page kind of solution, you know, like you, you complete one by one. But if you really want them to do that, then you have to structure your escape room in a way, once they click the challenge one, they have to complete it first before they proceed to the next challenge, uh, which I don't really recommend because it's, like you said, in, in a synchronous format, it will be, uh, you know, they will be really demotivated because they cannot move on to the next question. You know, just, just the exam where they're stuck in question one, they cannot move to the question uh, number two and onward. So make it slightly more open, all right? Can we create, um, can we create random question for the click item? Uh, I don't quite get that. I mean, can, can we create random questions for the click item? What do you mean by that? Random question in... Uh, yeah, yeah, I think uh, yeah. if, if let's say I click uh, on that, uh, let's say I put on the phone, right? So yeah. uh, first student get different question and then the second student get other question. It's like, uh, can we can we do that? For escape room, they will be looking at the same set of question. Then unless, unless you create different duplicates of the same room, but you jumble mm -hmm. up the question. Uh, that will be another okay. way. So okay. different group right. will get yeah, different different group will get different link lah you get I me mean? uh, ah yes uh, for me i just want to make sure for the phone this group get different question but yeah. it's still in the same set okay all right correct, okay thank correct. you yeah what happened is if you do it uh, uh like in breakup rooms i do recommend that as well uh, in breakup rooms instead of giving them the same link all you have to do ingenuously is you just duplicate them duplicate the uh the room or once you have completed one set of course then you just uh, randomly assign the the linkage to different questions that would be one way so different group will get different different link actually so they, they cannot they cannot go to another team and start to ask uh, uh, you know like questions or try ask for help and all that so they have to solve uh, it's like they enter different room lah, you know like in a normal physical room as well that each team will go to different room but they they will complete more or less the same task to escape you know something like that that's the concept okay uh, can you share on how to add the background music? Oh yeah, background music is up here. The only downside about background music for Genelli is once you add a background music, it's continuous from beginning until the end. So if I go to page one, right? If I add a background music, you click here, right? Click and you upload your music. Let me see if I have any music here. Okay, let's say this one, if I upload, it will be played throughout you know for the background music okay this is this is one way if you don't want um if you don't want that background music to be played to continuously then you have to add audio but the problem with add, adding audio is uh, the learner has to click or if you play, put auto play then it will be just played for that short moment for that particular page so it's quite annoying as well so i don't really recommend that so uh, background music is this just click one and then add if you can see here it will be the same one until the end so if i this is first page if i go to the last page you will see the same the same uh music background music so it'll be played throughout so you might want to find a softer background music which can be played throughout the same i think this is the same constraint in uh, canva if you if you have used canva before if you use canva video when you add the background music it will be played throughout your your video something like that so you can choose to loop it means it will be loop or you can you know uh high audio i think this one is premium can't remember and then you can pick the uh the you can trim the music if you want like here so shorten and all that but because it's um because it's background music it should be fine okay so if i were to present now you can see the background music being played throughout if i were to so you will pick up. Okay. Pro and cons actually, because when they are completing their tasks in the room, usually you prefer a quiet room rather than 
uh, background music. So um, yeah, so you might want to consider uh, whether to put. But again, the good thing about Genially is they allow you to to turn it off. So if the student like it, they can just turn it off, right? Okay. Other things, if you want it to be page by page, then you have to go to audio. And then you have to go to the page first. Let's say this page, you want a different audio that insert and then upload your audio here and then drag it here. All right. So let's say I try here. The result. Oh yeah, it's already here. Sorry. The upload the audio is already here. Then you can put it somewhere. And then you can loop. You can hide. You can be an audio. This is what I meant by if you want it to be, if you don't want to uh, the audio to be played throughout. So you can go to the page and insert the audio and then change the setting by clicking this button and then you will be able to change the setting, right? So if immediately, if you see, I added one music here. If I go to another page just now, the background music audio is gone in a way. Yeah, but it, it, because it's going to be like this, controlled by this thing, right? So pro and cons. Any other questions that I missed, just in case, I think we are quite running out of time. Or maybe I just finish off my, my point first before we open up for more questions. So in a nutshell, uh, I, I concluded in, in this way. If you would like to try virtual escape room, the time and effort is quite high. Creativity is also quite high in a way because you need to really imagine how you want it to be done. And then technical skills, it's not that high because of Genially. If you're using Genially and Google Form, I think it's quite easy. So unless you're using another tool like um, like uh, you want to embed other features, then you might need more technical skill. But basically, it's quite manageable and really uh, worth a try. So I don't know. You don't have to like force yourself to 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 use this immediately, but it will be good to add on as perhaps starts with uh, as an activity first. Then only you go for assessment, depending on how you want to to, to try it out. Right. So. I think that's our question. The slides are available in the link. Um, I'm going to type it here as well. You can you can get the slide from the link in case for those who miss it. Any other question that I miss? Yes, it will be very good for team building as well, really. Um, but if, you met, if you're going to do it physically, that will be even more interesting. Just that in physical setting, uh, you can still have the Genially format, you know, but but the students are in front of you. One thing good is you get to control and you, you get to give feedback immediately. Um, another way of doing uh, escape room in a physical setting would be the items that you, you really arrange the items, you know, and uh, how to put it. And uh, you see you see how to react to all those, you know, items in the in the physical setting, but in, in a virtual format, you can't, right? um any other question just in case for the sample in in Genially itself okay let me go back to Genially just before i forget in Genially itself there are quite a number of examples for escape room if you want to use them all right the template i mean i prefer to create uh, from from scratch if you would like to if you would like to use uh, the R format it's just go to inspiration all right can search here escape room these are some of the escape room that has been done all right so let's say it's this one this is about the nervous system so you can you can actually try it out first if you want all right and then you know proceed this one location one and then you have to find where to click you know so this is slightly more elaborated but good to get some inspiration on what to do. So you can use this as a template. Or uh, like this one, quite popular as well. I think somebody shared this one, the Harry Potter part. All right. So it depends. But I think, I'm not sure if it's complete. Yeah, this is like a bit of, a, you know, the, the one I told you, the narrative part and, and whatnot. But these are some, some escape room for you to get some inspiration. All right. If you created a good one, you can also share it here if you want to. All right, uh, that is one. Another one is this one using Ting Ling. Those of you who want to use Ting Ling, you can go to this link. I'm going to share it in the chat box. Also, another sample. This is another sample, of, or you can just Google digital escape room with Ting Ling. 
this is using Tingling Knot generally. All right, so it, this is a step by step guide. The thing about Tingling is like you can link it to a lot of things like Google Map, uh, audio file, uh, music, Google. You know, you can see this like there's a multiple, multiple, uh, you know, multiple rooms. Okay, they can go from room to room. So this is also a Tingling demo or how how they use the 360 image and all that. So this this page is quite useful. It actually explains step by step if you want to use Tingling and uh, Thinglink and Google Form. Okay for you to create the um, escape room and to get some inspiration. I mean, if you don't have a very, you know, interesting idea on how to do it, uh, just do like this, you know, very as simple as having a scenario, you know, <laughs> rather than a, a full narrative. Sometimes it's going to be quite uh, a challenging task for you to come up with a story, right? So use a simple scenario like a daily scenario, like as soon as you enter your science classroom, the door shut, slam shut, blah blah. The very simple scenario that would be good enough for a start. Okay. Yeah, sure, sure. You can try escape room. <laughs> any other question? No. Yeah. Any questions to Mr. Mike? Ada lagi? Sementara ada masa lagi? Hmm. Ada, I hope yeah. it's clear. <laughs> right. Okay, you are done, Mr. Kiman? Yep, that's yep. all, I think. Thank right. you. Hello, okay. I'm in touch. All right. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chua Kiman. All right, uh, it has been a very uh, good uh, webinar. Okay, I think that we have learned so much from it, and it is very interesting, the escape room. I think that we uh need to be uh, much more creative in terms of uh creating yeah, our yeah. escape room all right uh, i think we we can start small start small first and then you know uh you can gradually increase the engagement and so on okay using that all right one, so one more, I think that, that I, I, one more that uh, i would suggest is let's say let's say if you if you really don't want to spend time on this what you can do you reverse you, mm -hmm. you tell students escape room, uh, how to do escape room, and let them create different escape room for you, something like that. Yeah, so yeah. That, that would be a reverse way of doing it. Yeah, empower the student. I think that, yeah. you know, yeah. the students, they are yeah. much more creative and then right. they are much more uh, technical, competent compared to us, the, you know, uh, digital immigrants. So why not empower our students to help us creating the escape rooms, all right? And yeah. you and use the idea for your own class all right so right, yep right. okay thank you so much uh kimai uh, for the very uh excellent for the excellent session all right so for uh, our usm staff you would like to get your cpd please fill in the uh, feedback forms all right uh it is in the the link is in the chat box all right we you have only 20 minutes to fill in the feedback feedback forms all right so and then uh, the, all all our CDA sessions are recorded. So don't worry if you miss something. Just go to the CDA e, uh, YouTube channel and look for the uh, YouTube uh, the, the the recording session. It is all there. All right. Thank you very much, everybody, for attending today. So hopefully, uh, we'll meet again. All right. We have a wow two session. Okay, wow two session. Uh, when will it that be? Maybe next week, right? 18, yeah, next week. Ah, 18, next week. week. All right. So uh, don't forget to, to come to the WOW session two, all right, next week on the 18th of March, all right. Uh, it will be like much more interesting, I think much, 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 much more interesting. So be here with us uh, and hopefully, inshallah, uh, you know, you will benefit from all the session for your class. All right. Okay. Thank you very much, everybody. See you when I see you. Bye. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. And have uh, a good day, everybody. Thank you, man. Thank you so much, Dr. Azidah and everyone.